Semester at Sea is uh, an educational uh, organization. It's under the aegis right now of the University of Virginia. Students from all over the United States, uh, college students, participate in Semester at Sea, uh, plus students uh, from uh, other countries. But in the fall of 2002 and in the uh, fall of 2006, I circumnavigated the globe. You get a sense of the entire world. Uh, and for somebody like me, who's a writer, uh, I believe that writing is all about seeing, and uh, there's probably not many better ways to change your perspective, to open up your eyes, than to uh, go past the known into the unknown world. We went to Brazil, we went to Cuba, we went to Egypt, we went to Vietnam, we went to Burma, uh, to Spain, to Italy, uh, to Morocco, South Africa, to Kenya. In 2006, I met a hunt tour driver in uh, Egypt, in Alexandria, Egypt. And at first we tried to avoid uh, connecting with him, but uh, we ended up creating a friendship with him. And uh, there was a little bit of, uh, his last words to me in 2006 were, was, uh, remember, uh, Christian and Muslim, we're, we're all brothers. I went and I spent two days with him and uh, I think I learned a really important lesson about Semester at Sea or about travel uh, and about the importance and significance of it and that is Muslims and Christians, just as he said, he wasn't an educated guy but he was a smart guy. But what I learned was that uh, we have more kinship with people around the world than we have difference. It was fascinating to go to Burma before Aung San Suu Kyi was, uh, she was still under house arrest then, uh, and to see the situation there. To me, Burma was a lot like Cuba, and that is very repressive, near totalitarian societies, and to see a world in which you can't, you go into a bookstore, and uh, there are maybe 20 books in that bookstore, and uh, uh, everything is censored. Um, or to go to Cuba and to try to find a, um, an internet cafe and you can't, you can't find one. To see situations where people uh, don't have the freedoms that we often take for granted here was illuminating, I would say. I believe firmly in experiential learning. It's one thing to read John Hersey's Hiroshima, and I think that that's a, a powerful, important, understated book. But to have the advantage of reading that book as you're traveling toward Japan and then you get off that ship and you go to Hiroshima after having read that and you're with 10 or 11 students who you're leading on that trip and you meet a Japanese gentleman who is 75 years old, who was seven years old when that bomb dropped on Hiroshima. So he was there, he experienced it, and he comes back every year to that memorial to the, to the atomic bomb. To meet him and talk to him and see somebody who survived that, I think puts that book in dramatic and emotional and intellectual perspective that you simply can't have if you're, in, uh, if you're in the classroom. We sailed into Cape Town and that is simply one of the most beautiful ports you can sail into. Uh, and one of the most beautiful situations, Table Mountain, Lion's Head. But there's such discrepancy in that place in South Africa. There's such a sort of a crackling sense of potential violence in that, uh, in that country. Plus, there's this uh, great gap between the haves and the have-nots. So there are people who live in the township, uh, tin and uh, you know, cardboard huts, and then there are people who live, and we've seen a lot in the news recently, but we, these people who live behind 12 foot high, uh, two f feet thick walled uh, you know, fortresses. What was amazing about Cuba was, number one, that uh, most Americans didn't get to go to Cuba. In order to get to Cuba, you had to fly through Toronto or some other place. Castro certainly is a master of propaganda, and he wanted to promote his agenda. Uh, and I think we had a sense of that. But we were brought to Parliament. We got to uh, meet Castro. We got to hear him speak for three and a half hours. He, gave, he stood up there at 70 some odd years old for three and a half hours. So uh, uh, even though he really didn't answer any question, no matter what question was asked of him, he uh, somehow f found a way of uh, making that into a propaganda statement and then ending up the last 30 seconds with an answer to the question. We got to ask uh, uh, Castro questions and uh, the first question that uh, one of our students asked was uh, whether or not he was involved in the assassination of John F. Kennedy which made us all gasp a little bit because we thought maybe we're not going to get out of Cuba. 
the experience in Vietnam, the really an out-of-body experience for me, and it was for many of the students, to Ho Chi Minh City. Uh, we went to the uh, War Museum in, uh, in Hanoi. We went to the Kuchi Tunnels outside of uh, Ho Chi Minh City, or what was Saigon. The experience of going in those tunnels, recognizing what their fathers had to do, what I probably uh, could have been doing at 19 years old. To crawl through those tunnels, uh, even the tunnels that are made uh, into a tourist attraction a little bit. So then, you know, the dirt was taken away and they were, you know, cement, cemented. Uh, but only about six of the 15 students who were with me could actually make it through the tunnels. It was too scary, it was too closed, it was too claustrophobic for them. So I think that gave them a vivid sense of what it was like for their fathers. Before we had gone on that trip, we, we read uh, Tim O'Brien's The Things They Carried, where he talks, among other things, about going into those tunnels, about imagination being the killer, about going into that darkness, not knowing what would be there. Uh, I think, again, gave a vivid sense uh, that literature can give this to you, but then to be able to take the literature and enter the world with it, I think, enhances both the experience in the world and the experience of literature as well.